the Hyundai Ioniq 5 shares a lot of its electric vehicle technology beneath the F6. Also, similar to the Ioniq 5, it is viable with the most recent, super speedy public DC quick charging stations. Using a 350 kilowatts charger, according to Kia, you can charge the battery from 10% to 80% capacity in less than 18 minutes and replenish 70 miles in less than 5 minutes under ideal conditions. Sadly, there are very few 350 kilowatt stations. Despite this, you can think of the F6 as being ready to take advantage of faster, more powerful fast charging in the years to come. The road will still have many small bumps and seams, but even moderate potholes won't send sharp jolts into the cabin. The interior of the F6 is not as futuristic as the cabins of other electric vehicles, but that doesn't mean it doesn't look and work well. The wide digital panels that sit atop the dashboard are easy to read from a distance and resemble some Mercedes and BMW vehicles in style. Although the Hyundai Ioniq 5 and the Kia F6 are related, Kia has successfully given the F6 its own personality. The Kia suspension setup is more rigid than the Hyundai's, and the vehicle as a whole is noticeably sportier than the Ioniq 5. The F6 is responsive and simple to control around turns thanks to its sharp steering. Also, it's quick. From 0 to 60 miles per hour in 4.7 seconds, our all-wheel drive GT line test vehicle was faster than a comparable Ford Mustang Mach-E and Volkswagen ID. Four and roughly comparable to the Model Y long range from Tesla. The F6 smooth power and adjustable brake regeneration make it easy to drive every day. The F6 suspension isn't as comfortable as that of some of its rivals. The F6 picks up road imperfections and sends them directly into the cabin when it's on the road. The car can get old quickly when it keeps crashing into potholes and juddering over bumps. The interior of the F6 is also slightly noisier than that of some of its rivals, such as the Volvo XC40 Recharge and the Ioniq 5. Following a couple of long days, the seat stood apart as another area that would profit from progress. The F6 infotainment system responds quickly, supports Apple CarPlay and Android Auto with a USB connection, and is simple to use even while driving. Sadly, the Meridian sound system in our test vehicle never provided full bass and distorted music at higher volumes. It is a significant improvement over the Bose system found in the Ioniq 5, which is included in the F6. We likewise encountered a little issue with Kia's path focusing framework, which struggled with keeping the F6 in the path, and the versatile voyage control had a propensity for halting for vehicles left out and about. Similar to the Ioniq 5's trunk, the front one is ridiculously small and barely big enough to hold a laptop bag. Better is storage with fewer items. The ample legroom in the rear passenger area will also make it easier for parents to install a child safety seat. Overall, however, the F6 rivals offer storage options that are slightly better if space is a priority for you. We evaluated the all-wheel drive F6, which, according to the EPA, should have a range of 274 miles on a single charge. The F6, on the other hand, 
did not travel the estimated 261 miles in the real-world range test. In our tests, even the related Ionic 5 was able to go further. The F6 is compatible with the most recent high-powered DC fast charging stations, which is a positive feature. The F6 price is comparable to that of Ford and Hyundai rivals, but there are areas where it falls short. At this price, the interior materials aren't quite up to PAR, and buyers might notice the subpar sound system. We think that the Ionic 5 has a little bit more personality, and the Tesla Model Y offers something special in this market that Kia hasn't quite managed to capture with the F6. See you in the next video. Thank you for watching.